For the last year, this M4 iPad Pro has been my main computer. I moved away from my MacBook Pro because I really wanted a lighter device, and I was also curious about how capable the iPad was for everything. To see what was possible, I really pushed this device to its limits. I'm even filming this video using the iPad's front-facing camera. It looks terrible, right? I really hope Apple upgrades this next time. Anyway, surprisingly, after a year, I realized I don't really miss my MacBook. And today, I will share a couple of unexpected reasons why I fell in love with my iPad Pro. First, I need to be clear. I'm not going to discuss if the iPad can replace a Mac. I still don't think it can, at least at this point. That's why I also have a Mac Mini on my desk. Whenever there's something I cannot do on iPadOS, I jump to my Mac Mini directly from the iPad. But that's the topic for another day. Today, I will focus purely on the iPad experience. The first surprise is that I didn't realize how restrictive the traditional laptop's clamshell design feels. Look at a normal MacBook. The screen is always attached to the keyboard. But look at my iPad Pro setup. It's modular. When I'm at my desk, it's on the magic keyboard. When I need to go somewhere, I don't necessarily need the keyboard. I just grab the screen. I can also pair it with a portable folding keyboard, just in case. Or, and this is my favorite use case, sometimes when I'm eating lunch at my small desk, with a MacBook, the keyboard takes over all my desk space. But with the iPad, I detach it, put it on my tiny stand, play some Netflix, and I still have plenty of room for my food. I know it sounds silly, but the versatility of the iPad's form factor really brings me lots of convenience. I know what you're thinking. That sounds exactly like a Microsoft Surface. And you're right. I was actually a Surface 3 user 10 years ago, and I really loved that form factor. I was actually pretty excited about the Snapdragon Surface Pro. But at this point, I'm just too deep in the Apple ecosystem. Switching to PC is not an easy option at this point. So the iPad seems like to be the only choice. The second thing I truly enjoy is the screen. The tandem OLED on this thing is fantastic. With 1000 nits max brightness for SDR content, it's incredibly bright. My room always gets strong sunlight, and I usually struggled to see my MacBook screen clearly. By the way, on MacBook Pro, you can actually use third-party tools to force HDR brightness for SDR content. But that still feels like a hack rather than a supported feature. The iPad Pro screen is always bright enough. It also fixes one of my biggest issues with my MacBook Pro, motion clarity. On MacBook Pro's mini LED screen, I always notice slow response times, motion blur, and ghosting especially when you switch from black to white. And also because I work in video production, I'm quite sensitive to frame rates. Watching a 24 frames per second movie on my MacBook Pro sometimes just felt wrong. It's like a TV with smooth motion turned on, but the OLED iPad Pro, crisp motion, zero latency. Also, compared to MacBook Air's IPS screen, the OLED has great colors and true blacks. It just makes everything really enjoyable to look at. The next thing I didn't expect is how much the touch screen speeds up my workflow. On the Mac, if I see a link or a button I want to click, I have to locate the cursor, move it, and click. But on the iPad, I see it and I just touch it. It removes a layer of friction. I actually catch myself trying to touch MacBook screen now. The direct interaction just always feels intuitive. The next thing I love, Face ID. So there's nothing wrong with the Touch ID on MacBooks, but Face ID is just invisible and lightning fast. I turn on the screen, and I mean, passwords autofill, apps login, there's just no more reaching across the keyboard just to scan my finger. The next thing I love, or maybe I should say the thing I don't have a huge issue with, is multitasking. It used to be the iPad's biggest shortcoming, but with iPadOS 26 and the new windowing system, now the experience is a lot closer to macOS. I can have up to 12 windowed apps open on the screen, resize them, and organize my space. 
To maximize efficiency, though, I think we need to master keyboard shortcuts. When you are familiar with them, dealing with multitasking on iPad is just a lot easier. And the keyboard shortcuts on iPad OS are pretty much the same with Mac OS, so I don't need to change my muscle memory. In latest iPad OS updates, we also get our old split wheel and slide over back, which is awesome. That being said, to me, the multitasking through touch on the current iPad OS still feels a little bit overcomplicated and always requires a lot of steps. That's why when I use my iPad without the keyboard, I prefer to avoid crazy multitasking. The next thing I'm pretty happy about is that there are just so many dedicated iPad OS apps. On the Mac, I feel like I live inside a browser tab half of the time because not everything has a native Mac OS app. The web interfaces of a lot of things, they're definitely fine, but sometimes they can be a little clunky. They take longer to load, and they constantly lock me out for security reasons, which I totally understand. On the iPad, the apps are always well-designed and feel snappier. Plus, you get useful features like downloading shows for offline viewing, which sometimes can be pretty tough to do on the Mac. The next thing I really love, and this one is kind of hard to quantify, is that using an iPad just feels fun. As we all know, macOS is designed for serious productivity work. It's where you do your spreadsheets. It's kind of a utility. But iPad OS, the fluid animations, the bounce of the apps, even the inertia when you move the mouse cursor, everything just feels organic and alive. I guess that's why people always say the iPad is just like a toy. And to me, I feel like that's actually not a bad thing because it has actually changed my mindset when I work. For example, doing taxes on a Mac feels like a chore, but doing them on an iPad, I don't know, it just feels a little less miserable. Whenever I'm using it, it always puts me in a creative mood rather than an admin one, which I really appreciate. Okay, so one year later, is my iPad Pro experience perfect? Absolutely not. From time to time, things pop up that drive me crazy. I will definitely share those struggles with you along the way. But honestly, 90% of the time, this thing and light device is really everything I need. However, as I mentioned earlier, my home computing setup includes another component, a Mac Mini. I actually made a video about this setup a while ago. I'll put the link in the description if you want to check it out. Later on this channel, I will share more details with you about how I combine my iPad Pro with the headless Mac Mini to get the best of both worlds. So be sure to subscribe to follow along. That's all for today's video. If you enjoyed it, please give me a thumbs up. If you want a sneak peek of my iPad Pro and Mac Mini setup, I will see you in this video. Have a nice day.